All right, we're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Gary, could you come up and lead that? This is Gary Palmier. If everybody could stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You just keep standing. Uh, Chief Ed Mills will give the invocation. Heavenly Father, yesterday we commemorated the 16th anniversary of 9-11. Today we are in the aftermath of two hurricanes and multiple fires with fires still going. We see devastation, sadness, abandonment, fear. And yet we know that when we get back to our stations, calls will come in and we will once again resume the task of the first responder. It is a remarkable commitment that each firefighter makes and each firefighter's family lives with. We thank you for that commitment and for the freedom you have granted us to make it. Fortify all of us with the strength of purpose and of character demonstrated by our honorees. We give thanks for these quiet heroes and for the talents they shared with us during the past year. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, you can have a seat now. I'd like to introduce to you Martin Hernandez, who's here on behalf of Supervisor uh, Kathy Kelly Long. So, Tonight, what's going to happen, I think a lot of you have been here before, is we have certain officers that we're going to be honoring tonight for their service to the fire, the different fire departments. These are folks who we're calling Outstanding Fire uh, Service Officer of the Year. And, uh, you know, they're representative of all the other fire fighters, and we're very happy to do this. As folks come up here, first of all, we're going to have the different chiefs give, you know, give a presentation on why the award is being given. And as the awards are given, you'll notice there are the big statutes, excuse me, awards. And then there are plaques, which are for the individual officers. The awards go back to, or the big uh, trophies go back to the departments. And then there are certificates underneath from different politicos. And uh, first of all, there's County uh, Ventura Board of Supervisors, there's Julia Brownlee's office, if he ever showed, he, he didn't show. It didn't come. Maybe we'll get to you in the mail. There is one from the state senator's office on behalf of both Annabeth Jackson and Henry Stern. And then you'll find that there are two from the California Assembly. One is signed by Jackie Irwin and the other one is signed by Monique Lemon. And uh, you kind of think they would have gotten together, but you know, it's the state assembly, so maybe not. Uh, so those are, the, those are the awards up here. The Ventura County Fire Department has uh, five different stations with five different awards. So if Chief Barry Parker can come up, we'll start that process. Well, first of all, we want to thank uh, the Kiwanis for such a warm and inviting Warm. It is warm, right? <laughs> but thank you so much for recognizing each and every one of these participants tonight and uh, from the fire service. And uh, hopefully it's okay if I speak on behalf of all of us. We truly appreciate when the community um, gathers and rallies behind us and recognizes the hard work of, of the men and women in the fire service and, and nationwide, but more importantly, right here in our community. So thank you, Kiwanis. So Ventura County Fire Department, there's five battalions, so we recognize uh, five different firefighters of the year within the county. Um, unfortunately, quite a few of those firefighters are out doing their job. Uh, they're actually out on the fire lines. So we pray for their safe return and for the communities that 
uh, are being uh, threatened by wildland fires. I know you haven't heard much about it because there's lots of other uh, catastrophes that are happening, but that's where some of these folks are at tonight, but we'll still recognize them. The first is uh, engineer Keith Leonard. Uh, he is from uh, Battalion 3. He resides in Newberry Park. He's been in the fire service now for six years, uh, predominantly working in the Thousand Oaks area. He's 28 years old. He's the youngest of three brothers, and he was raised in Thousand Oaks. He takes his position very seriously. Uh, he knows that he's representing the fire chief, whether he's sweeping the floor or saving a life. But that's what he wants to do, is serve the citizens of Ventura County. That's Engineer Keith. Keith Leonard, he's not here. The next one is Captain Robert Shopper. Uh, Robert lives here in Ventura. He's a captain at Fire Station 42 in Moore Park. He's got two kids. Uh, he's been in the fire service now for 22 years. Um, he says that after many years of testing, he was eager to start. Uh, he was finally offered the opportunity. He was excited, again, to serve and have rewarding challenges. Speaking of one of those challenges, um, Robert had a really tough year, as the rest of us Ventura County firefighters did. Uh, his engineer, Ryan Osler, was tragically killed uh, September 21st of last year. Captain Shopper definitely stepped up. He filled the void. He was there for Ryan's family, uh, emotionally, physically, in a very tough situation. And tonight, we recognize Captain Robert Shopper. <laughs> Firefighter Steve Buckles, he works in Battalion One, Special Operations in Camarillo. He graduated from high school in 2000 from Moore Park High School. He felt as though that was important to put in here. He's got three kids. He's relatively new to the fire service. Believe it or not, this is his second career. He originally worked for a bank. He had a really tough job at the bank. <laughs> he was the VP of special assets. He was managing a $54 million project that were troubled assets. So he decided after that that he wanted to pursue a new career, and that career was the fire service. So tonight we recognize Firefighter Stephen Buckles from Battalion One. <laughs> Richard Randolph, who couldn't be here as well. He's from Battalion Two, located in Ojai. He lives here in Ventura. Uh, Richard Randolph actually got into the fire service because of his uncle, who was a Los Angeles City fire captain. He chose the fire service because it's always changing. He says it allows him to make a difference in his county that he grew up in and still lives in. Richard Randolph. And then finally, we do have a recipient here. Mr. This is engineer Garcia, uh, please step up. So Alex is, is near and dear to my heart because I was his captain at one point and truly got to enjoy working with Alex. And his captain is here as well that he works for now. And his wife, Lucy, he has two children, Ariana and Julian. Alex grew up in Ojai. Uh, he spends a lot of time outside of just going on calls. He participates in one of our cadres, so he teaches a lot of our firefighters self-rescue. So what to do, teaches us what to do when something goes wrong for us, and we really appreciate that. He goes above and beyond what he's called on to do, which is an impact to his family. So we appreciate that his family allows for Alex to spend so much time with us teaching not only firefighters, but the new and upcoming firefighters and academies. Alex is also a Spanish speaker, and in our community, that is extremely helpful. It means the world to us on an emergency that he can give comfort to someone else in their time of need just through his Spanish speaking abilities. So thank you for that. And then lastly, community. I wanna to touch on that again. 
Alex is, is a community member, not just a firefighter, but someone who lives in this community, grew up in this community, supports the community. And tonight we honor you, Alex, the Firefighter of the Year, Battalion 5. Chief, you've got to carry all five of those. Shows. <laughs> okay, next in line, <clears throat> and, and incidentally, in, in years past, we did everything alphabetically. And uh, you know, so the city of Ventura was always last. But somehow that got mixed up this year, because city of Ventura is next. So if Chief Brock would come up, we'd like to honor Brandon Johnson. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of Fire Chief David Indaya, who couldn't be here, I just want to say thank you to the Kiwanis Club and giving us this opportunity to recognize some of our own. And uh, tonight we recognize Brandon Johnson. Uh, Brandon Johnson is a firefighter paramedic with the city of Ventura. Uh, he was hired in February of 2014. And in a relatively short amount of time, Brandon uh, has done many, many remarkable things. Um, pretty typical of uh, the employee set that we uh, hire for a firefighter for the city of Ventura, Brandon is a solid, quiet performer. He isn't about blowing his own horn. He's not about making a lot of noise about, hey, look what I'm doing or, uh, you know, look how great I am. But truly, Brandon is one of those guys that is really great, and he really deserves to have his horn blown. Um, he is unable to be here tonight because Brandon is actually up in Northern California working as a fire line paramedic on uh, a large uh, wildland fire in um, Klamath uh, National Forest, um, Siskiyou County. So uh, tonight we have his uh, engine company uh, from Station 6 here in Ventura. They're located on the east end of Ventura off of Wells Road. And uh, Brandon's captain, Tom Wynell, is here as well as uh, Brandon's family, uh, his dad and his wife. Um, so. Brandon is uh, an amazing guy who has done some, like I said, really remarkable things. But one of the things that is really near and dear to all of our hearts in the city of Ventura is that Brandon happened to be working a regular, run-of-the-mill, everyday shift. And they got a call. Uh, his fire captain, his fire engineer, and Brandon got on the engine to go and drive out to go assist somebody else who had called in a time of need. While they were driving on the way to that call, the engineer, the firefighter uh, who drives the fire engine, suffered a cardiac arrest behind the wheel while they were rolling down the road. Um, the captain had the wherewithal to be able to get over to where they activate the uh, air brake on the fire engine and safely bring the, uh, the fire engine to a stop. Uh, didn't cause any additional emergency or a crash or whatever. But Brandon immediately sprung into action. He got off the engine. He was able to get the, uh, the gear that we carry as paramedics on the fire engine and immediately start care on uh, the guy that he had just arrived earlier in the morning. His friend, his colleague, uh, was able to start uh, CPR immediately, start um, we call ALS or advanced life support interventions on that engineer. And within a couple of uh, minutes had a restored heartbeat. And they transported the engineer to the hospital and he's still with us today. Um, so we're really, really thankful for that particular little nugget of, of really great things. And that just typifies the kind of person that Brandon is. And we held a ceremony to recognize Brandon and the captain and also to, um, you know, just to come out and show of support for the engineer and his family. And, you know, um, Brandon would never be the guy who would say I'm a hero or um, I think what he said, and dad correct me if I'm wrong, but he said, I was just doing my job. And that's the kind of guy Brandon is, and we're happy that we have the opportunity to recognize him as the 2017 Firefighter of the Year for the city of Ventura. This, this date is chosen because it's as near as we can get to 9-11. Uh, uh, when we first started that in 2012, I don't think, or excuse me, it was 9-11 2001, was it? Yeah, so 2002. Okay, I misspoke before. Um, nobody 
even giving any thought to the fact that this is the fire season, right? <laughs> we should have done it in March, but <laughs> there's plenty of green out there. Um, okay, so next up at the City of Santa Paula Fire Department, Chief Ariaza. I just, uh, yeah, that's right. Ariaza? Is that, that close? Okay. Uh, firefighter Matt Lindsay. Matt. Um, our firefighter of the year is uh, Matt Lindsay. He's uh, started off with Santa Paula Fire Department in 2005 as a reserve. Uh, we had a basically a, a large reserve cadre at that time. We were transitioning into a full-time department and Matt came on as a reserve 2005. He then um, was right away hired as a full-time, he was actually our first full-time firefighter in 2006, summer of that year, and uh, has been with us ever since. Matt uh, has been part of our fire family for, for since that time and the fire family has grown. He's uh, married, been married to Kelsey now a few years. His, uh, he was born and raised in Santa Paula, and I, I believe he, he always wanted to be a firefighter with us, and that's how he, he came on. Matt was part of the uh, initial response to the mission incident, and uh, he um, was able to fight back. He was out for almost a year with uh, lung issues. We did lose our captain and firefighter at the time. They have now retired because of that incident. And Matt came and said, I don't want to retire. I want to, I want to continue with this in the fire service and worked tremendously hard to get back. And uh, he, he showed a, a great deal of, of response and all the department was admiring him for the work ethic that he had in getting back his health from that incident. Um, as I said, his captain is now retired and the firefighter. At the time, Matt was working as an engineer for us and that's part of the versatility that, we, that he had. Uh, we were missing an engineer for a little while and Matt stepped up and was our engineer at the time uh, of that incident. And since that time, as I said, he was off uh, a year and came back. Um, he's now hopefully fully recovered um, rehabilitated and doing well. He loves to fish. He's, he's our local fisherman, so he supplies the stations with all the yellowtail and tuna. So um, that's probably why they voted him. The <laughs> he's a great fisherman, so he, he brings everybody to fish. Um, but his, his mom and dad uh, are here, Luana Lindsay uh, and Dean, also born and raised in Santa Paula. So he's got a long legacy of, um, and Luana's brother was also on our fire department as well as her grandfather, I believe. So the Lindsay, or actually Lindsay's, and uh, his uncle is, is today working as a captain with him. So uh, they came along. So uh, he's, so it's a big fire family for us and he's, uh, third, fourth generation Santa Paula firefighter. So, congratulations, Matt Lindsay, on Firefighter of the Year. Okay, from the City of Fillmore Fire Department, Chief Bill Herrera, uh, we present the award to Firefighter Paramedic Michael Salazar. Uh, first, I want to take a moment to congratulate all of tonight's recipients and their families. Um, your recognition is well deserved. I also want to uh, thank the Kiwanis Club, Gary Palmier, and his staff for putting on such a great event, and we appreciate you guys inviting us here tonight. Um, I wanted to take a minute to talk about City of Fillmore Fire Department because I think we're uh, one of the most unique fire departments here in the county, um, and we're uniquely staffed, um, and Mike is one of those, those members. Uh, the City of Fillmore Fire Department actually only has four employees, believe it or not, a chief and three captains. Uh, we run about 1,200 calls a year, and uh, we're staffed by folks who make a living doing something else. 
and it's really great to see some of the faces of guys who, are, who have made it as uh, career firefighters who have uh, passed through our department. But they, uh, they do come to serve the community. They do uh, enjoy serving the community. Um, Mike is the epitome of that, uh, those uh, people that make up our department. Uh, he has worked in EMS since the age of 19, starting as an EMT. He went to paramedic school in 2005 and started working as a Ventura County paramedic in 2007. Uh, Mike currently works uh, for American Medical Response and has held the position of level two paramedic. I think that's a super paramedic if you're a level two paramedic. Um, he's also been a preceptor, a field training officer, and now holds a position of field supervisor, EMS 48, which covers the east end of the county. He was also selected um, to become one of the few community paramedics in the state of California recently, which requires extensive training in areas of hospice and tuberculosis, and this serves uh, to better serve that segment of our EMS population. Mike started with Fillmore in 2012, and is a firefighter paramedic. He was promoted to engineer in 2015. Uh, he's a very hard, hard working young man um, who's always looking to better his knowledge uh, on the fire ground. He's constantly training when he's at the station doing shifts. Um, he, he's currently also a member of our training cadre, um, so he spends a lot of time at Fillmore setting up both EMS and fire drills for the rest of the crews. Um, during our last academy, which we graduated 19 members in July, um, Mike, be he gave me a call and he said, hey, Chief, I'd like to start a mentoring program here at Fillmore Fire. We get a lot of young, young firefighters who are interested in the career who come to us out of fire academies from all over um, the state. And so he thought it'd be a good idea to have a mentoring program. So he started a mentoring program for our new firefighters and recruits. Um, his goal was to uh, help them grow understand the unique culture of the fire service, because it is a unique culture, um, give them um, all of his energy and knowledge, um, things that he's learned from his life experiences both in EMS and fire. Um, and I think these are the reasons why his uh, fellow members at Fillmore Fire voted him the 2017 Firefighter of the Year. Um, so I want to congratulate Mike, but I really want to thank uh, his wife Connie and their four-year-old son Enzo, um, the families of the members of our department give as much uh, uh, as anybody does, so we're really grateful and we thank you for allowing him to serve uh, the city of Fillmore. Mike, congratulations. Okay, next up uh, from the Naval Base Fire Department, Chief Gerald Clark, presenting to Captain David Santillo. Uh, my name's Gerald Clark. My friends call me Jerry. You guys are my friends, so call me Jerry. Uh, first, I want to thank Kiwanis for doing this, for recognizing the uh, first responders, and I also want to thank uh, Kiwanis for what they do for the community and also making us feel appreciated. Thank you. Usually, I uh, bring my speech and I forget my glasses. Tonight I brought my glasses, but I don't have a speech. So that's good for you guys, because it'll probably be shorter. But really, I don't need one when it comes to uh, David Santillo. He's one of our firefighter leads, or captain, as we call it. And uh, this morning, around 4 AM, we had a guy that had a heart attack a cardiac arrest and the, the guys did CPR on him and they were successful. They, they revived him and he's alive thanks to our firefighters' efforts. Um, you know, that's, that's what firefighters do, so that might not seem that remarkable, but what's, what I thought about it today was we're, we're recognizing Dave Santillo. He runs our uh, EMS program for our fire department. And I thought about it, wow, he, we have 70 firefighters and he makes sure that they're all trained, equipped, and certified to, to do that. And these guys are saving lives every year. And it's because of his efforts. So thanks for your work, Dave. Uh, I would like to th uh, thank his family for being here, his uh, parents, his in-laws, his lovely wife. I, and as I thought about it, 
he puts so much work and effort into the fire department. He has uh, so many different programs. I wonder, he must go home and just go to sleep. There's no way he can. But in talking to his wife when he goes home, he's the same way. He's fully involved with the kids and fully involved with his family and his community. So, and I, I'm not surprised by that. Uh, he runs a lot of different programs in our department to get our guys ready to do their job. He runs our live fire training program, which gives our guys actual experience fighting real fires. He, uh, he's the kind of guy that uh, he's always taken on extra programs, and I actually have to tell him to stop. It's too much. And it's because he cares about his fellow firefighters, and more importantly, he cares about the community. And so as I thought about the, uh, my fire department, we all think about succession planning and, and where we're going to be in a few years. And, and I'm not saying this to toot his horn, but I can see that in a few years, he'll probably be the guy standing here introducing one of our firefighters as the chief of our department. And he's done a lot of work to prepare himself for that. And uh, I just want to thank you for, for what you do, Dave. It is appreciated. Thank you. Okay, from the city of Oxnard Fire Department, Chief Hamilton to present to Captain Scott Carroll, deceased. Uh, good evening. I'm actually uh, standing in for Fire Chief Base, who uh, uh, had a prior commitment of um, a city council meeting, and so he got the short straw, and, and you guys get me. So, um, but uh, we'd also like to thank the Kiwanis Club um, for being able to recognise uh, one of our own. And I actually have uh, two recognitions, but I'll get to the second one in just a second. But uh, first of all, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about Scott Carroll. Um, and I was actually talking with uh, Riley and Michael here before we started, and and because we have a have a nice bio written for Scott. Um, but we've, we've done this a number of times. Uh, Scott passed away uh, unexpectedly on November 30th, 2015. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's been a long, rough road since then. And, and we've, we've gone over this uh, bio a number of times uh, through the different um, uh, ways we've been able to recognise Scott. So uh, rather than redoing that, uh, we, I thought um, Riley said, eh, wing it. So here we go. But um, now Scott, Scott is a, a, he did, um, he worked for us for 19 years. He was hired in um, uh, 1996. His father actually did a, a 30 plus year career also with the Oxnard Fire Department. Uh, his family's given a lot to our agency. Um, and he, uh, he's somebody that uh, I think just about every conversation I had with that guy, and, and I think most of the other members of our department would say the same thing, um, are the kind of conversations that would make a sailor blush. Uh, Scott had a way of uh, getting some colourful language out of people and, and replying with some colourful language as well. But he, he, was, um, <clears throat> he was very passionate about the Oxnard Fire Department and very, uh, had a lot of pride in the agency and the stuff that he was able to do for us. His family was incredibly important to him and, and uh, I think sports was, was his other big thing. Uh, he was a huge Dodgers fan, Rams. So. Um, he is dearly missed, and the the um, the folks in our agency are, are still we still tell funny Scott Carroll stories because uh, he was just one of those characters. Uh, so tonight, um, uh, Riley and Michael are, are here to accept the award for uh, Fire Captain Scott Carroll. which is close. Okay, from the Forest Service, uh, Chief Mark Greer will be presenting to Fire Prevention Officer John Peaks. Good evening. Come on over. 
first, thank you, Kwanas, for this uh, nice ceremony. This is a great thing to do for the community, as you have been an upstanding and group to uh, represent the community for a long time. Quality individuals have great support teams. The long hours and commitment given by any of the recipients here tonight has only been accomplished with the strong support from this, the family standing behind them. I would like to uh, welcome <clears throat> and recognize John's wife, Crystal, his boy, John the Fourth, his parents, Laura and John Jr., and his brother, Chad. And uh, that's it, I think no more for Cindy Fender, but just give them a round of applause, because without them, We ask a lot of the, all the recipients here tonight, and they give a lot. And uh, I think it goes without saying, it's because of all of you in this room. John Edwin Peaks III. John started his career here in Ventura County on the Sundowner crew out of Ojai, California. Uh, it seemed like an easy decision as John is a native of Ojai, and he's also a pretty avid outdoorsman. Um, He's one of the few people that I don't go to the forest when I'm not working because I want to be home. He's out in the forest hiking, camping with his family and enjoying it all the time. Um, he started there in 2002. From there, John went on to work in Engine 52 out of the Ojai Valley District Office. And this was where I first met John when I came to the forest. Um, John was a young skater kid. I was a beat up kind of crusty hotshot coming off of a career working in the Sierra Nevadas. I wasn't too sure. I was a little worried about this kid. <laughs> I was, but after meeting John, I knew right away we were going to be friends and we would be know each other for a long time. I'm not sure if he felt the same way at the time, but it's panned out. Um, from there, John became an apprentice for the Los Padres National Forest and spent, spent those years as an apprentice working for the Rio Grande flight crew, working for the Los Padres hotshots, before landing back on the Ojai in the, on a, as an assistant engineer on engine 352. In 2010 our, 2010, 2010, our paths would cross again as John accepted an engineer position on the Santa Barbara district as, a, as an engineer on engine 44 at the Rincon station which I already worked at as a patrol, a prevention unit. We got to work there for just over six years, side by side, doing projects, day-to-day -day life at the stations. It, it, was a, it was a good time. We had a lot of laughs, as we do at the stations. We had our highs and lows, but throughout, John remained dedicated as an employee and a public servant, he became a father, a leader, and a good friend. John never lost sight of his roots, and to this day remains a trusted go-to leader for young firefighters. In recent years, our careers have kind of transitioned together, and we both have returned back to the Ohio Ranger District. John is now there working in, as a fire, pre fire prevention officer and investigator right there in the Ojai Valley. There couldn't be a better fit for John as an Ojai native who, is now, who now has the knowledge and skills to protect his home community as only a local could do. He is also the Sundowner Crew Coordinator where he trains, mentors, and leads the young first-year firefighters in the same position he was in back in 2002. And to his credit, uh, he does a, he's stepped up. And John is actually, I'm John's supervisor, whether he likes that or not at times, but he is still a go-to person for me. And he isn't always happy when I poke my head in the office because he knows he's gonna get tasked with something else, but he takes it and does it with a smile and does a good job, so. John, thank you for everything. It's been a pleasure working with you and I look forward to the future.
so you'll notice from your program, this isn't just called the Fire Services Day or evening. It's called the Fire Services and Heroes Evening. And uh, the Oxnard Fire Department has nominated our hero of the year, and uh, that is Brian Lutz. And so Chief Hamilton will come up to present that award. Uh, so, uh, the the uh, this is the first tonight's the first time I've actually met Brian, um, but the uh, the the incident that occurred um, that Brian was able to uh, assist us with occurred on uh, January 3rd of this year, um, and uh, as irony would have it, I was actually the battalion chief working that day, uh, and we had we got a call of a traffic collision, and we get those calls all the time, and so it didn't seem like much, and and when then then there was a further report that there was uh, it was a head-on collision. And, and so that everyone kind of gets a, you know, a little bit more anxiety and then w we got a report that there was somebody trapped. And, um, and so we started sending additional units and then the next transmission was that the vehicle's on fire. Uh, and for us, um, we've seen that all too often and it, and it rarely does it end well. Um, and if it wasn't for Brian's actions on that day, um, it would not have ended well uh, for the driver of that, that truck. Um, Brian um, actually witnessed the, the accident occur and uh, with, without having much thought for his own safety, which his wife I think still gives him a hard time about, um, uh, was able to uh, get in the, the vehicle where the subject was trapped and uh, he, he's, his feet were stuck under the dashboard and uh, it's just lucky that Brian is the size that he is um, and he was able to yank that guy um, out, of the, out of the vehicle before the fire took over. Uh, burning his hands in the process. And so uh, tonight we'd like to recognise Brian Lutz and the, and the work that he did to save a life and help us out. So. So there are years when we also recognize Good Samaritans. Uh, the difference between a Good Samaritan and a hero is a hero puts his own life in danger in the service of his fellow man. And I think you'll agree that the, we classified this one correctly. All right, uh, I've been told that I tend to move things along a little too quickly sometimes, but uh, <laughs> this is the end of our program. I have some oh, you have some more? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, the pictures that were taken this evening will, if you go to Facebook and go to uh, Ventura Kiwanis, the pictures will be on that page. And then the, the table centerpieces, we would like the recipients to take those with them if they would. And we'd like to thank our chair of the evening, Gary Palmier. He had an outstanding committee, not the least of which was Michelle Bluel, who I have to recognize because she's my wife. <laughs> Don't want to miss that when I get home. But there were, there were many others, so it, uh, I think you'll agree it's a great evening. I like this venue. It's much less formal than another event that we put on in the spring. And quite frankly, it's a better meal. So I'm glad we're here again. I started the evening by saying that the, the persons who are being honored tonight are representative, and I really mean that. We are very proud of the first responders we have, both in this room and throughout the departments. Uh, you know, it's just gratifying that we have so many dedicated people, and I'm glad that you're able to hear some of the stories uh, that come from that. So unless somebody else has something else to, to offer, we're done. Thank you for attending. There's still more cake, and I think there's still more food. Thank you. Uh -huh.